We've got new Nazca mummies and a lot more to talk about today, so get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, on a live stream with Jaime Masson yesterday and Joyce Mantilla, uh, we were presented with these images of two new Nazca mummies never seen before. Uh, you can see these two human-sized uh, Nazca mummies that... Uh, seem a little different uh, to me uh, than Montserrat and Maria, which are distinct from each other, but uh, Maria at least has, uh, you know, Petra, which looks very similar to Maria. So there's at least two Maria types, uh, presumably others. And now we have these more great alien types uh, that are, again, human-sized and tridactyl, uh, but that look a little different. Uh, you know, I have yet to see any analysis, any CAT scans or x-rays uh, of these beings, uh, so I hope that is being done. Uh, either way, fantastic footage. Now, some have pointed out that at least one of the mummies is kind of weird. Uh, you know, check this out. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of a weird angle, but it does have uh, kind of lopsided eyes and a crooked nose. You know, what's going on there? You know, that's why we really need some x-rays and CAT scans of these specimens so we can make sure they're legit. Uh, I wouldn't imagine at this point that they're getting fake bodies, but hey, you never know. So uh, we definitely need to be sure about these. Um, you know, I, I don't know how it's, you know, nostrils got lopsided there. That's, that's weird. But, you know, these things are, you know, po potentially thousands of years old. I guess stuff happens. Uh, but anyway, uh, they're really intriguing. And of course, we have this one head here. Uh, still haven't seen the giant head. Uh, they're, they're saving, they're, they've got that in the bank. Maybe because it just looks so fake. You know, Jaime Masson said it looks like a pinata. Uh, you know, so, you know, whatever. I guess they're waiting for some, some uh, x-rays and CAT scans on that. Jaime uh, told me that he wanted to wait until there were Western uh, scientists involved uh, in the research on that. Uh, before they release the image of the giant head. Maybe, again, because it looks so fake, they really need Western science to back that up. Uh, but either way, uh, two new uh, uh, kind of weird-looking uh, Nazca mummies. Meanwhile, on Jesse Michaels, Hal Pudoff tells us why we can't get a clear picture of a UFO. Uh, he says, and there's music playing in the background, so I can't play the clip, but he says the craft is manipulating the space-time metric. So we're just going to get these fuzzy outlines because light is being bent in various ways around the craft. So you're going to get a lousy picture. Uh, if you ever see a photo of a UFO, and I've talked to NASA analysts about this, uh, and it has clearly a clearly defined edge, it's probably a fake. I don't know. I mean, I've seen some pretty good UFO videos that I in, in pictures, uh, like the one in Turkey, uh, etc., that seem to have pretty clear shapes to them. So I'm not sure if this is entirely accurate, but it's a really interesting thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Meanwhile, Keith Thompson, in an excellent interview with Engaging the Phenomenon's uh, James Ian Dolly, uh, who appeared on the channel not too long ago, love James, he does great work, and this is a fantastic interview. I encourage you to go watch the full thing, and I'll link to it below. But he gives us some insight into the Kenneth Arnold UFO sighting. Uh, you know, the first, you know, massively known UFO sighting in the semi-modern age uh, where the term, you know, flying saucer comes from. And uh, he, he talks about, you know, the, the term flying saucer and how, you know, Kenneth Arnold wasn't seeing saucer-shaped craft. But uh, the way he reported it and the way reporters reported on it uh, gave, uh, you know, that, you know, gave birth to that term. And all of a sudden people started seeing flying saucers. So did the phenomenon adjust its shape? Uh, because that's how people were now thinking about it and perceiving it. You know, I talk a lot about how we co-create a lot of these experiences. Is that an example of that? Uh, a lot of these crafts seem very, you know, nuts and bolts. You, know, you can uh, wrap your hands on them, although I don't recommend that. Uh, but, you know, they're very physical. But at the same time, uh, the manifestations possibly of something, of something else, something we don't understand. But, you know, it's really interesting because a lot of this stuff, even though some of it we seem to be co-creating, uh, some of it we don't seem to be co-creating. A lot of it seems uh, external to whatever our uh, consciousness is and is acting independently. I would love it if we could find a way to differentiate the stuff that we're co-creating with the stuff that we're not co-creating that's acting independently 
of us. Uh, you know, I think that if we could figure that out, that would tell us a lot. But getting back to Kenneth Arnold, uh, Kenneth Arnold's daughter uh, has given us some insight into that sighting and that it may not have been strictly nuts and bolts craft. Uh, here Keith is talking about this. Came two decades later. His daughter, Kim Arnold, told an interviewer that her father, who was, who is, was now no longer here, uh, was constantly mystified that people thought he had reported extraterrestrial spacecraft nuts and bolts hardware nothing of the kind he said she said that her father said the objects were were, were of different densities of blue white light they changed their form as they moved he thought they were living they had the beat similar to a heartbeat and he told me later that they that they that they led him to a deep intuition of being from a realm a different dimension and it is the realm that we go to after this life well that's amazing guys again i encourage you to go watch the full interview he has a lot else to say including kenneth arnold's later experiences uh, orbs in his bedroom uh, more mystical or paranormal uh, type events possibly uh and this stuff does seem very mystical very other dimensional uh, my own experiences uh, seem to be of that in that vein. So I, you know, I think this is an extremely important part of the phenomenon, what I call the greater phenomenon uh, that goes beyond the mere nuts and bolts UFO phenomenon. Uh, there's other stuff going on that seems inextricably linked with the UFO phenomenon, and is, you know, the UFO phenomenon is just baked into this other stuff. And it's weird and it's trippy and I don't understand it. Uh, there are some that, you know, believe they do. And I, I would love to be one of them. Uh, if you know what's going on, let me know in the comments below. I have vague conceptions of what I perceive as reality and the uber reality. I have, you know, a kind of a vague model that I've worked out uh, about what I think is going on. Uh, but, you know, subject to change at a moment's notice. So I'll be really curious to know your insights. But the phenomenon seems to have always been here, or at least been here for a long time and in interacting with humanity. Uh, a lot of people think that the uh, that somebody, somebody in the know, looted the Iraqi museum after the fall of Baghdad. And here's an article talking about this. Really, really interesting. Um, yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, the, the, the museum, of course, was looted, famously. You probably know this. Uh, it looks as if part of the looting was a deliberate planned action, said McGuire Gibson, a University of Chicago professor and a president of the American Association for Research in Baghdad. They were able to obtain keys from somewhere for the vaults and were able to take out the very important, the very best material. I have a suspicion that it was organized outside the country. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was. I think it could be cracked in no time. Uh, yeah, yeah. If a if a police team were put on it. So yeah, what do you think was going on? Were uh, interesting anomalous artifacts uh, connected with you know uh, who knows what uh, taken from uh, the uh, museum in Baghdad? Uh, a lot of people think that that's what it was all about. Uh, the whole war, uh, you know, the Iraq war was to, you know, retrieve these, uh, you know, uh, mysterious uh, items. A lot of people believe in the, you know, uh, the Gilgamesh, the Gilgamesh th uh, story uh, that, you know, a lot of a lot of this was all about getting the body of, of Gilgamesh. And, you know, there's a couple of videos of a couple of different possible Gilgameshes, and here's one of them, including artifacts found with him. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what this thing is. Uh, I mean, I probably fake, but I've never seen it debunked. Uh, so, you know, I would love a debunking on this. And if you can point to a debunking of this crazy Gilgamesh video, uh, yeah, I would love to see it because it's got to be fake, right? But if it's fake, you would expect somebody to have debunked it by now. Um, but you know, uh, it is again, it's probably fake either way it is really interesting. Uh, so uh, I don't know what was going on. Uh, but the ancient world, I think, uh, holds a lot of answers to some of these mysteries. Here's a great video by Jimmy Corsetti talking about ancient Baalbek 
uh, in the very mysterious uh, Trilithon stones, which are these enormous, enormous freaking stones. I think it's like 80 uh, metric tons. Uh, how do they move these things? Why? I mean, well, why place them 30 feet off the ground? Just to show they could? Uh, we don't know who built this or why. I mean, they're insanely huge and uh, very, very mysterious. If we could understand, uh, you know, how they built this and, you know, who built this, I think we could learn a lot about uh, humanity's interaction with the beyond. And these ruins were all around the world. Uh, these are uh, images from Japan, the ancient mysterious ruins of Japan. We don't know who built these things or why or how they did it. Uh, you know, uh, precise megalithic construction. Uh, it's just crazy. It's just crazy, guys. Uh, and again, with a lot of the same hallmarks found in places like Baalbek and uh, South America. What was going on back in the day? I mean, look at that stone. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane, guys. I, I love it, but it's so frustrating. I want to know the answers, guys. If you know the answers, let me know. By the way, this is a great documentary, and I'll link to it in the comments below. Speaking of crazy conspiracies, is this proof that the power outage in Paris the other day was a hack? Look, precisely uh, at the turn of the hour, uh, the power goes out all across the city. <laughs> except there for some reason i don't know what was going on there but yeah what what happened uh at precisely that time uh wh why was paris hacked is this you know yeah is it wh wh what was going on guys I don't, I don't understand the paris uh power outage but uh it's interesting speaking of paris and the olympics but also ufos edward riordan a famous remote viewer says this is this video real i'm going to have to confirm this uh, looks familiar though, and he links to this interesting uh, UFO video uh, supposedly taken over the Olympics. Uh, well, yeah, what is that thing? It's only like a, a second long, and it just goes back and forth showing you this weird object. Uh, I don't know what this thing is. Is that a skydiver? I didn't hear about any other skydivers over the Olympics. Uh, so is that a UFO? Well, what is that thing? What is that thing? Right over the Eiffel Tower uh, during the Olympic ceremony. Um, it's definitely intriguing. Uh, so if you have any theories, uh, let me know what you think. Here's another cool UFO video shared by Think Tank of Mexican military uh, intercepting a UFO. I mean, the, the footage isn't great quality, but you can see these two jets uh, and you just saw the object they were allegedly going after. Uh, did they fire this thing? What happened? I asked for more details or, you know, the link to the source video. Now, I haven't gotten a response yet. Uh, but if I get any answers on this uh, very interesting encounter, uh, if it happened, uh, I'll, I'll let you know. And if you see it before I do, let me know, uh, because this could be a, an example of other countries other than the U.S., intercepting UFOs. Meanwhile, Ronnie Vernet uh, gives us an update on his uh, investigation into the UFOs in the Amazon. He says, uh, a UAP appeared above the house where the monitoring equipment were, uh, was installed, three meters from the ground, emitted a humming sound and scanned the area using a luminous beam. Right after that, it emitted a rectangular luminous window on the ground from where a second UAP in an oval shape emerged. The second UAP did a scan in front of the house where the equipment uh, was installed before uh, disappearing through the same rectangular luminous window. This incident was recorded by four cameras and an array of sensors. The only camera that was recording in front of the UAP hovering above a close distance was turned off only during the time the phenomenon was there. The full video of the four cameras will be released soon. And he shares this image. I guess that's the, uh, I don't know if that's the light that the thing was emitting or if that's the object itself. Uh, either way, it uh, sounds like some gangbusters uh, footage. I can't wait until that video is released. I wonder if he's going to do like a documentary or something uh, where he's going to, you know, showcase this footage. Uh, either way, I'll, I'll be keeping my eye on this because I think that uh, the potential for him having captured something really interesting uh, is there. And yeah, I, I can't, can't wait to see it, guys. Meanwhile, Richard Giltright is reporting this. 
the communication attempt of 1869. British astronomers uh, organized a moon project financed by the British government. The survey went on for two years and recorded 2,000 lights. In the 1800s, they were seeing UFOs on the moon, guys. This is nuts. This has been going on for a while. Just four years after the end of our Civil War, there was a great eruption of lights on the moon. There were so many lights seen that British astronomers actually organized a moon project financed by the British government. This survey of moonlights went on for two years, and in that time, the astronomers recorded sightings of 2,000 lights. Many of these sightings were well-known geom geometrical figures, crosses, rectangles, familiar symbols which could be recognized throughout the solar system. In 1871, after two years of moon research, what was the conclusion, uh, the summary of findings by the ast astronomers? No one would draw a conclusion, not in public at least. The British government withdrew its support of the project, and the findings were filed away and forgotten. So, yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, 1800s, they were finding UFOs on the moon. How long have the powers that be known about the phenomenon? And what have they been doing about it? Because they've definitely been doing stuff about it. Anyway, let me know what you think about it all in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button and the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. If you don't want to miss a thing, join me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, links below. Love to see you guys there. If you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or buying my, one of my books on Amazon. See the link below or by becoming a channel member because channel members are rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other videos on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.